I swear this anime was made for a 14 year old. I think this is about solo leveling. Mr. Karu got something to say. Let's see what he has to say. One of the things I love about anime is the amount of reach it has worldwide. When I was a kid, anime would often be stigmatized and mocked. I could never talk about anime back in high school. First of all, I was the only Asian kid in high school. It's a fucking redneck town. And I straight up... I could never talk about it. I get bullied, bro. You, you, like, you can't talk about Naruto. You can't talk about fucking One Piece or Bleach with them. They don't give a fuck about that. They're into this redneck fucking outdoors ATV camping shit. It's like there's no way I could be able to tell them about, oh, did you see Naruto's new power? It's like, no, I get bullied. As being Japanese cartoons, a playground insult I would hear constantly that would always get on my nerves because in mm. reality, anime has the ability to tell grounded and true-to-life stories. Stories. These stories are told very well. Yes, anime is great for showing a story. Just, the storytelling is compelling. But sometimes the anime in question has like a nine-year-old girl in thongs. And you're like, oh yeah, this girl's 9,000-year-old demon, by the way. So it's totally fine. But it's like, how do you show this to the masses, the normies, and have them accept you as a functioning member of society you don't stories that challenge political ideology social hierarchy and yes. economic disparity all while delivering quality entertainment on top of it all solo leveling is not one of those shows well okay first of all let's get something let's, let's get something straight if you are picking up solo leveling for its compelling storytelling about the world politics trying to deliver a theme on how capitalism is bad or how you know different ideologies it's not about that you watch solo leveling or you read soul leveling for the power fantasy this progression of people looking down on you but you're able to overcome that and you start flexing on people and that is the entirety of this power fantasy niche so i'm not going into this show expecting some kind of crazy storytelling to change my life i'm just here to fucking ook like a monkey when sung jimu does something really cool not one of those shows but it's pretty fucking cool i mean look at this shit Honestly, this like intro shit with the ants doesn't matter. Like, there's no context to it. It's just a bunch of S rank hunters fighting ants, which pretty much, pretty much might, might as well be just fucking random like mob monsters, right? I think the hype comes from the perspective of following Sung Jin Mu and the animation quality there definitely is like really good. But this ant fight, eh, it's like me. Cool. This is why I watch anime. Oh, and yeah, hey, pretty if much. If you enjoy solo leveling, you definitely love lit RPGs. Lit RPGs are basically. That's right. Raid Shadow Legend. Make sure to use Karoo's <laughs> discount code for your first multi-pull and back to the regular These content. Stories, Wait. Of the gate. These portals carry dangerous monsters that would bring terror to human civilization. Along with this event came the hunters. Select individuals that were granted special powers in order to fend off the monsters and defend you. This is a straight up mobile game ad. I see what you did there. Humanity they were ranked in a system. S given to the top of the top and mm -hmm. E given to the... Well, apparently there's something beyond S, but maybe we shouldn't mention it for spoiler's sake. Thinky shitters. Our main character, Song, is one of those shitters. One day, Song is a... We are the shittiest of the shitters. You understand? E rank is the bottom of the barrel. But B... Uh, and amongst the E rank, we are the worst hunter to the point our power level is close to a civilian than to an average E ranker because an average E ranker is supposed to be like 70 power level. We're like 10. That might as well be a fucking pedestrian. Tying to a D rank dungeon, which is generally good for everyone except him. Because if a bronze new beta scrub like Song is in your lobby, it probably means you're gonna have a cakewalk. Spoiler alert, it nope. wasn't a cakewalk. There were smurfs on the enemy team. So Song's team gets insta wiped. He's laying on the floor, no leg, one HP. This guy's about to swing his axe right on top of his face when. Courage of the week! A player? Yeah. Yes. Out of nowhere, Sung gains the ability to level up. Something that was previously near impossible, nigh improbable to perform, now only he can do. I think no one can do this, right? Well, at least I don't think there's other players in this game that we're supposedly playing, right? I, I don't think so. Maybe there are. Who knows? Maybe that's spoilers. You know where this is going by now. Let's move on. A lot of people didn't like the pacing of this show. You know how it took me precisely one minute and 30 seconds to explain that premise? Yeah. yeah. The anime took two weeks and three fucking episodes to... Well, 
first episode and the second episode was technically a combined premiere that was separated into two. So I don't think that's too fair. Episode three was definitely a lot more of the world building. So if you're talking about the pacing, in terms of the anime release, yeah, it took three episodes to get there. Maybe not everyone's, you know, patient enough to let it develop. But if you assume that, you know, episode one and two should have been together, and then we have one more episode, and then... Even episode two was really hype. I feel like if you, you got hooked by the end of episode two, right? So I feel like it, taking the three episodes to kind of explain the world, and they're still explaining the world, it's not really a bad thing. And I hear that the anime is intentionally taking their time to really flesh out the progression. Like some of the fighting we did in episode three in the instance dungeons, that shit was kind of slow. And even episode four, right? Like apparently they're drawing out a lot more than what people might want but in my opinion the slow level progression is the foundation of the power fantasy because if you just make this guy too strong right off the bat it's not that hype right we gotta really pay attention to how are we going to balance this power scaling as time goes on to do the same thing like dude with that amount of time i could have watched the entirety of singles inferno nice or, or read the bible i agree that the first episode was pretty slow yeah, but I agree. that's because I've read solo leveling before. Read oh. my lips. Oh shit, you can't. Understand this clearly. If I was an anime only watching this show for the first time, I wouldn't have had this problem. Don't believe me? I thought episode was totally fine. Obviously, I wanted more of it. I wanted episode 2 to be in episode 1, but as an anime only so far, I feel like there's nothing really wrong with the pacing and I enjoy the slow progression. I asked my friend Jeff, who's never watched solo leveling, to give the first episode a try and... Oh, here he is. Yo, Jeff. What do you think of the show? What's up, Jeff? You don't like it, Jeff? Now, are we gonna believe these guys, or are we gonna believe Jeff? It's pretty- All right, all right let's see what actually it says over here. Let's oh, see what the people actually said. Yo, Jeff, what do you think of the show? Now, are we gonna believe these guys? The show did a terrible job in introducing the story. Instead of doing a 45 minute preview, which is the bare minimum to that first 10 chapters, blah, 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 blah. They decided basically just complaining that it should have been two episodes in one instead of you know, two separate episodes. The downs. I first agreed that the manual is really good. I would recommend it to everyone. But, big but, this anime is progressing so slow. 0 0.5 chapters for episode. I'm not kidding. It's crazy. So this is like, uh, you know how Classroom the Elite is just like rushing their content like fucking crazy. Just covering volumes and volumes in like one episode. I guess we have the other side of the spectrum where we're, we're doing it too slowly. Have you guys felt like, I don't know. I felt like everything has been... Not too slow. I felt like the, pr the pacing is fine. The third episode triples down on bad pacing by being slow and dull. Aren't these people all just fucking webtoon readers? If they're accurately depicting the structure of first 10 chapters of the manhwa and blah, blah, blah. I feel like these people are webtoon readers that want the, sh the hype shit to come fast while the anime only is like, wow, this is fascinating. I want to learn more about the fucking world. Like, give me more of the world building. Like, take your time with it. Like, I'm in that part of the group, but I understand if people that actually read the content just want the hype shit to happen immediately because they're not going to give a fuck about the, the exposition. They already know about it. Guys, or are we going to believe Jeff? It's I'm going to believe clear Jeff. The only reason why people are mad about the first episode is because there wasn't immediately a second one that followed it. Just look at how mm. the rating of episode one varies from episode two. This should yeah. tell you that the show isn't. I still think this is one of the biggest mistakes they've ever made. They fucked up episode one hook. No one is going to get hooked by some random exposition and setup except hardcore fans and people like me that glaze this show because it's one of the trendiest show right now. They should have really combined the two right now. And look at this guy in chat right now. I watched episode one of Soul Leveling and dropped it. It didn't even pique my interest. Man, I, I, I am just... You are very pitiful. I am very sad that you're not able to experience one of the peak shows in fantasy right now. But hey, if you want to watch something else, that's your opinion. Bad. There just wasn't enough to satisfy. Why the fuck is a tissue there in the bed, hey? Hey, 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 what are you doing there? Yes. I think what should have happened was the studio should have prepped three episodes in advance, mm -hmm. drop them all at the same time, and we wouldn't be having this. Oh, like Frieden release, huh? All four episodes in one go, yeah? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Discussion. We've already seen this work for shows like Freerun and Oshinoko, shows that needed a prequel to set the stage, so why not here? But wait, hold up. That still doesn't answer the question. Why do people like this anime so much? Power fantasy. P 
people love power fantasy. People love weak by becoming strong. People love weak guy that gets, you know, uh, bullied and then has like some kind of revenge plot. People love super OP characters that are tested in a specific way that igno that like ignores everything good about them. And they're like, oh, you're the weakest of the weak. And they actually are super strong, like Irregular Magic High School. It's just the power fantasy. I don't know. You tell me. You like girls getting stepped on? Okay. Same All right. It is the show is brutal. It's almost. I, the brutal gore aspect of it. I never really thought that it was necessary. It's nice that they have it. That's not really why I'm watching it. I'm watching this to see everyone just get hyped at Sung Jin Moon as he starts to progress more and more into Giga Chad. Some of the recent episodes that we've seen, we can already see other people's reactions to Sung Jin Moon, specifically. Episode 4, not the battle against Kasuka. No one saw that. We saw it, but it's like, alright, that was cool, great voice acting, great, you killed it with the bare hands. But when he got out of the instance dungeon, and he started, you know, help, he, he, you know, threw the sword at that golem while everyone was struggling. Bro just walks away, like, silently into the shadows. Everyone was like, holy shit, who did this? And Juhi sees Sung Jin Moon walking away. Like, that shit, mmm. Call it cliche. It is cliche. I love that cliche. I love this power fantasy. Too brutal that it becomes funny like a family guy bit. I can do this. Speed's my specialty. Let me just ask you something. What do you think? Like why would you even type this? I'm just going to watch your reaction as I Okay, never mind. I thought you said I'm not going to watch your reaction because I already read the novel. Thank you, Mr. Crew. Thank you. I'll get out of here. Watch me. Oh, wait, it's this guy. It's the guy who's super confident in speed. Speed's my specialty. I'll get out of here. Watch me. <laughs> and your foot's gone. Shoes. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's got to be some kind of comedic timing to this, right? The fact that he's like, I'm so confident in my speed. Watch me. And the statue just fucking zaps off his legs. Like, there's something so comedic about this. <laughs> Someone put a SpongeBob soundtrack on that. Y you know, the one that goes... Nice. This anime really pushes what's allowed to be shown to kids, but it's working. With four episodes currently out, all of them have a score above an 8, and it's not a surprise Pretty as good. to why. Oh, you actually want me to tell you why? I, the, the main... He looks so cool. He goes from level 1 fucking little noob to like fucking level 99 mafia boss. I love this shit. Character is a generic black-haired canvas that anyone can plaster their yes. face on. Yes. Do you know why there's so many of this, though? Because this template, this formula works. Give me more shitty isekai. Give me more shitty power fantasy. Just execute it well. I don't care if it's generic. I don't care if it's overdone. I want more different variations of it done, executed in a proper way. I don't, like... Being oversaturated is not a bad thing. Being generic or cliche is not a bad thing. Ultimately, it's the delivery and the execution, right? If that stands out, then I think that I want more of this shit. Why not? Black haired canvas that anyone can plaster their face on. See, mm -hmm. see that? Yes. This could be you. I like to shit on Isekai. This could be you. This could be you. Power fantasy. See, this is the thing. I think a lot of people that watch these kind of shows maybe can envision themselves as the main character. I feel like I don't think I could envision myself as Sung Jin Moo. I'm more of like a little side character on the side that says some funny shit and maybe hypes the main character up. But I just love the progression, witnessing the story of someone that's really weak and looked down upon, progressing into this epic person that everyone like kind of relies on. I, I just love that formula. This could be you. I like to shit on Isekai being an obvious and blatant cash grab. Yeah. Because it is. But yeah, I, can't I don't care that it's there I love for it. a reason. I Sung love Jin it. Wu was ridiculed for being the weakest hunter in the world, was incapable of fighting the tiniest mob, and was pushed to near death countless times. So when the opportunity comes for him to breathe a second life, to yeah. become stronger than he was before, who wouldn't take that chance? A lot of And it's all about the feeling of like earning that strength, that power, right? We're not just given to us, right? I think a lot of Isekai's you're, you start off like pretty much OP sometimes, but those are usually isekais that don't take itself too seriously and it's kind of rooted in comedy. But serious power fantasy or isekais, I feel like if you give the main character all the OP powers right away, it can feel a little cheap. It can definitely feel a little cheap, but at the same time, you can have a nice way of, let's say, Irregular Magic High School, where Tatsuya already is super OP, but because of the way that he slowly shows his powers and he tries to be discreet and other people slowly realizing how strong he is, that, I think, is done very well. 
And another way spectrum is when the character is already super weak and wasn't strong at all. That slow progression that you're not entitled to the power. You earn it. You don't deserve like we deserve it because we worked hard to get it. And somehow that feels like it's a lot more genuine, authentic. I don't find it cheap. Well, power fantasies miss that crucial component. Sure, it's fun to see a dude wrestle a giant snake with his bare hands, but did he earn it? Did he show yeah. enough potential to warrant that power? Did he Absolutely. struggle multiple times before finding the right force? Exactly. Did he struggle multiple times, right? This guy is the weakest ever. He's been grinding and grinding to pay the fucking bills in the first two episodes. I think that trial, that testament, courage of the weak, perfectly describes Sung Jimu as a character. He showed absolute courage. He's the weakest of the weak. He fucking solo carried. <laughs> solo leveling, get it? Solo carried the fucking double dungeon. Everyone betrays him at the end, except Mr. Song, who technically takes Juhi out, but we'll talk about that. What, Whatever, right? Everyone leaves him. And at that moment, he's finally graced upon an opportunity to become stronger. I think he absolutely deserves this. Fortune? Song did. We saw him do it. And that's what separates him from everyone else who got in for free. Song is an overpowered main character, but at least he deserved it. He mm -hmm. grinds his daily quests, 100%s the dungeons, and levels the fuck up. That's what watching Sam Sulek does to a kid. I can't think of anything more the guy could have done. Hype is a key part of any action-focused anime. Without hype, most shonens wouldn't have had their most iconic scenes etched in the anal of history. Tanjiro in episode- Excuse me? History. Tanjiro in whoa, whoa, episode- Whoa, 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 one wouldn't have had their most iconic scenes etched in the anal- Anal? No, it's anal. You're right, it's anal. Of history. Tanjiro in episode 19. All Might versus All for One, or any fucking time Levi is against Zeke. These scenes will always elicit an emotional response no matter how many times I watch, because to me, hype is not a singular entity. It's voice acting, music, yes. and yes. animation all- The voice acting, the soundtrack, everything that just like- forms these hype scenes in episode two specifically when the statues start lighting up and the instruments they start playing but then it synchronizes with Hiroki Sauna's soundtrack and you can feel the desperation in Sung Jimu's voice acting as he struggles and just like crawls on the ground to get to the next spot dude An emotional response no yes. matter how many times I watch because to me hype is not a singular entity it's voice acting music and animation all working in tandem clashing colliding and eventually coming together to reach an ultimate crescendo that's what hype is and solo leveling knows that's what you came here for episode 4 is probably the most hype filled episode so far with yep. song finally getting his big break and if it keeps going in that trajectory i have no doubt this will be everyone's new favorite anime but let's dial it back I think that this definitely will be everyone's new favorite anime and people are, and, and the fact that it's a split core, right? I, I think it's slated for 12 episodes this season, but ultimately there's like 24 episodes in total. It's going to be like, I'm not completely sure, but I think it is like that. So it's only January. It is the start of 2024. Will this be the anime of the year? It's kind of too early to say that, right? I mean, come on. This is our new, like, like this is our first season into 2024. So it might be a bit too early, but I find it hard to believe that other animes will come in with this level of anticipation and hype and try to kind of defeat it, especially because if Core 2 airs sometime between like, let's say, um, next summer or fall, I feel like throughout 2024, solo leveling will be remembered. And exactly, it's still in the early episodes. We're not even at the good shit yet, right? So I feel like this might actually be anime of the year, even though it's a bit too early. Heck of it. Solo leveling is a good show. Some might even call it a great show, but it's yeah. also in the same ring as... Isekai Onsen Paradise. I love that shit. I love that shit. I haven't seen it, but I bet it's fun. ReZero will pass it? I don't think so. Because ReZero is probably not even gonna fucking air this year, bro. This is cute. Like Manny Pacquiao uppercutting a special. I, I I think Karu just likes this isekai, does he? Bud kid. For an anime that's intended to be the standout of the season, solo leveling isn't for everyone. In fact, it's made exclusively for guys like these, so I'm yeah. shit out of luck. You wanna- Is this you guys? I is this my audience? Are, are these the kids typing in my comment section? Maybe? It's fine if you're a kid, but, you know, the anime title is called I swear this anime was made for a 14-year-old. Nah, you're not- the, you don't look like this, guys? <laughs> I wouldn't judge you if you did. Hey, there's nothing wrong with it, huh? Honestly, I think kids these days have a better haircut compared to, you know, kids back in my days, bro. We had dumbass faux hawks. I think this hairstyle, even if you guys shit on it, I think it looks pretty damn good compared to whatever we were rocking back then. But 
I feel like hype transcends age gaps. Meaning, 14-year-olds can get super hyped about solo leveling. 20-year-olds can get super hyped about solo leveling. 30-year-olds can get super hyped about 40, solo leveling. 40 year and so on, so on. I feel like there's this part in us, this, this inner child, this inner 14-year-old, right? That desires fantasy, power fantasy, and hype, right? So I think there's nothing wrong if you look like this. In fact, I think kids like this and man children like me also enjoy it. Specifically for guys like these, so I'm shit out of luck. You want a wide cast of endearing characters? Nope, it's just him. Go watch Dungeon Meshi. Want a deep and profound story that doesn't cater to the MC's every need? Too bad, there's not a single anime this season with that. <laughs> but if you want to... Is there really no deep anime this season? Really? It, it, really? I feel like Apothecary Dyrus is con continuing, but is that actually deep? I'm not really sure. Just sit back. There's freedom, but I'm not really sure. Watch a dude go from zero to hero with godlike animation. Yeah, Soul that's all I want. Is the perfect anime for that. That's all I want. So, are you gonna be left watching scraps, or are you getting your broccoli cut and axe body spray like the rest of us? It's time to awaken your inner Zoom or, or your inner Gen Alpha. I think that this anime was made for a 14 year old. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. I think that some of the most iconic animes you probably watched when you were 14, like Naruto, One Piece, Bleach, and all this other hype shit, and that kind of form, that kind of like forms your inner identity of the kind of shows that you enjoy. And I grew up watching those kind of power shit too, like these like shonen shows that was super hype. Naruto going fucking QB mode. I fucking love that shit. And I imagine that 14 year olds, year olds like at this age, right, watching Sung Jin Moon just pop off. I am so envious of them. I'm just glad. That despite the age gap, both those kids and us as, as boomers can enjoy solo leveling. If you haven't watched it, definitely recommend it.